Hey, welcome to my daily devotions for February the 2nd, 2023. We are going to read Romans chapter 1, Acts chapter 6, Psalm 74, and Jeremiah chapter 2. Let's pray. Father, speak to us today uh, from your word. Address our lives and uh, take care of our needs with truth from your word and apply it to our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit. Make us new because we've heard from you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The amazing book of Romans. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, the gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who as to his human nature was a descendant of David, and who through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the Son of God. By his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and for his namesake, we received grace and apostleship to call people from among the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Christ, to Jesus Christ, to all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his Son, is my witness how constantly I remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray that now at last, by God's will, the way may be open for me to come to you. I long to see you so that I may, be, may impart some spiritual gift to you to make you strong. And this, this, that is, that you and I may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I planned many times to come to you, but have been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have a harvest among you just as I have had among the Gentiles. I am obligated both to Greeks to Greeks and non-Greeks, both to wise and the foolish. That is why I am so eager to preach the gospel to you who are at Rome. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it, is, because it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, righteousness from God is revealed, a righteousness that is by faith from first to last, just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Since what may be known about God is plain to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that men are without excuse. For though they knew God, they neither glorified him as God nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the mortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. Therefore, God gave them over to the sinful desires of their hearts, to sexual impurity for the degrading of their bodies with one another. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served created things rather than the Creator who is forever praised. Amen. Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lusts. Even their women exchanged natural relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthy, worthwhile, to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, slander, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossipers, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. Boy, we got that going on, don't we? Whoa, they invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decrees that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Acts chapter 6.
Acts chapter 6. This is a short chapter, but the next one's huge. So it all kind of comes out in the end. In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, which is supposed to, what's supposed to happen, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and we will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. Christian leadership is about prayer and the ministry of the word. Never, never forget that. This proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert, convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. They appointed them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, did great wonders and miraculous signs among the people. Opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia. These men began to argue with Stephen, but they could not stand up against the wisdom of the spirit by whom, they, by whom he spoke. Then they secretly persuaded some men to say, we have heard Stephen's speak speak words of blasphemy against Moses and against God. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. They produced false witnesses who testified. This fellow never stopped speaking against this holy place and against the law. We've heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs Moses handed down to us. All who were sitting in the Sanhedrin looked intently at Stephen and they saw that his face was like that of an angel. We'll pick up the story again, the, the historical account again tomorrow. Psalm 74. This is a, a psalm written by Asaph. Why have you rejected us forever, O God? Why does your anger smolder against the sheep of your past pasture? Remember the people you purchased of old, the tribe of your inheritance, whom you pre redeemed, Mount Zion, who, where you dwell. Turn your steps toward those, these everlasting ruins, all this destruction the enemy has brought on the sanctuary. Your foes roared in the places where you met with us, and they set up their standards as signs. They behaved like men wielding axes to cut through a thicket of trees. They smashed all the carved paneling and all the axes and with their axes and hatchets. They burned your sanctuary to the ground. They defiled the dwelling place of your name. They said in their hearts, we will crush them completely. They burned every place where God was worshiped in the land. We are given no miraculous signs, no prophets are left, and none of us knows how long this will be. How long will the enemy mock you, O God? Will fold revile your name forever. One of the things he's doing here, he's telling us, tell, telling the Lord exactly how he feels. And when you pray, you should tell the Lord exactly how you feel. And that's that's how he will, he will respond to you and help you. Verse 11. Why do you hold back your hand, your right hand? Take it from the folds of your garments and destroy them. But you, O God, are my king from of old to bring salvation upon the earth. It was you who split open the sea by your power. You broke the heads of the monster in the waters. It was you who crushed the heads of Leviathan and gave him as food to the creatures of the desert. It was you who opened up springs and streams and dried up the ever-flowing rivers. The day is yours and yours alone the night. You established the sun and the moon. It was you who set the boundaries of the earth. You made both summer and winter. Remember how the enemy has mocked you, O Lord, how foolish people have reviled your name. Do not hand over the life of your dove to wild beasts. Do not forget the lives of your afflicted people forever. Have regard for your covenant, because, ha because haunts of violence fill the dark places of the land. Do not let the oppressed retreat in disgrace. May the poor and the needy praise your name. Rise up, O God, and defend your cause. Remember how fools mock you all day long. 
Do not ignore the clamor of your adversaries, the uproar of your enemies, which rises continually. Then, Jeremiah chapter 2. All I have to do is find it here real quick. There it is. The word of the Lord came to me, go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem. I remember the devotion of your youth, how as a bride you loved me and followed me through the desert, through a land not sown. Israel was holy to the Lord, the first fruits of his harvest. All who devoured her were held guilty. The disaster overtook them, declares the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, all you clans of the house of Israel. This goes on for a while. <laughs> what fault did your fathers find in me that they stayed so far from me? They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. They did not ask, where is the Lord who brought, you up, brought us up out of Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, through a land of deserts and rifts, a land of, a land of drought and darkness, a land where no one travels and no one lives, I brought you into a fertile field, a fertile land, to eat its fruit and rich produce. But you came and defiled my land and made my inheritance detestable. The priests did, did not ask, where is the Lord? Those who deal with the law did not know me. The leaders rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal, following worthless idols. Therefore, I will bring charges against you again, declares the Lord. And I will bring charges against your children's children. Cross over to the coast of Kittim and look, send to Kedar and observe closely. See if there has ever been anything like this. Has a nation ever changed its gods, yet they are God that they are not gods at all, okay? But they were worshiping false gods, that's the point. But my people have exchanged their glory for worthless idols. Be appalled at this, O heavens, and shudder with great horror. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own cisterns, broken cisterns that cannot hold water. Is Israel a servant, a slave by birth? Why then has he become plunder? Lions have roared and have growled at him. They have laid waste his land. His towns are burned and deserted. Also the men of Memphis and Tophanes have shaved their crown of their head. You have not brought this on yourselves by forsaking the Lord your God when he led you in the, in the way. So why now go to Egypt to drink water from Shihor? Why go to Assyria to drink water from the river? Your wickedness will punish you. Your backsliding will rebuke you. Consider then and realize how evil and bitter it is for you when you forsake the Lord your God and have no awe of me, declares the Lord, the Lord Almighty. Long ago, you broke off your yoke and tore off your bonds. You said, I will not serve you. Indeed, on every high hill and under every spreading tree, you laid down as a prostitute. I had planted you like a choice vine of sound and reliable stock. How then did you turn against me in a corrupt wild vine, into a corrupt wild vine? Although you wash yourself with soda and use an abundance of soap, the stain of your guilt is still before me, declares the sovereign Lord. How can you say I am defiled? I have not run after the bales. So how have so how you behaved in see how you behaved in the valley? Consider what you have done. You are a you are a swift she camel running here and there, a wild donkey accustomed to the to, to the desert, sniffing the wind of her craving. In her heat, who can restrain her? Any male who pursues her need not tire themselves. At mating time, they will find her. This is how you talk, but you do all the evil you can. During the reign of King Josiah, the Lord said to me, Have, have you seen the faithless Israel, what faithless Israel has done? She has gone up on every high hill and under every spreading tree and has committed adultery there. I thought at, that after she had done all this, she would return to me, but she did not. And her unfaithful sister Judah saw it. I, I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away because of all her adulteries. Yet I saw her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. She also went out and committed adultery. Because of Israel's immorality, 
Because Israel's immorality, immorality mattered so little to her, she defiled the land and committed adultery with stone and wood. In spite of all this, her unfaithful sister Judah did not return to me with her heart, but only in pretense, declares the Lord. The Lord said to me, Faithless Israel is more righteous than unfaithful Judah. Go proclaim this message toward the north. Remain faithless, Israel, declares the Lord. I will frown on you no longer, for I am merciful, declares the Lord. I will not be angry forever. Only acknowledge your guilt. You have rebelled against the Lord your God. You have scattered your favors to foreign gods under every spreading tree. You have not obeyed me, declares the Lord. Return, faithless people, declares the Lord, for I am your husband. I will choose you one from one from a town and two from a clan to bring you to Zion. Then I will give you shepherds after my own heart and will lead you with knowledge and understanding. In those days when your numbers have increased greatly in the land, declares the Lord, men will no longer say the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. It will never enter into their minds to be remembered. It will not be missed. Nor will any, nor will any, nor will another one be made. At that time, they will call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all nations will gather to Jerusalem to honor the name of the Lord. No longer will they follow the stubbornness of their evil hearts. In those days, the house of Judah will join the house of Israel, and together they will become. They will come from a northern land to the land I gave your forefathers as an inheritance. I myself said. How gladly would I treat your sons and give, your, give you a desirable land, the most beautiful inheritance of any nation. I thought you would call me father and not turn away from following me. But like a woman unfaithful to her husband, you have been unfaithful to me, O house of Israel, declares the Lord. A cry is heard on the barren heights and weeping and pleading of the people of Israel because they have perverted their ways and have forgotten the Lord their God. Return, faithless people, I will cure you of backsliding. Yes, we will come to you, for you are the Lord our God. Surely the idolatrous commotion on the hills and mountains is a deception. Surely the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. From our youth, shameful gods have consumed the fruits of our father, of our father's labor. Their flocks and herds, their sons and daughters. Let us lie down in our shame and let us dis let our disgrace cover us. We have sinned against the Lord our God, both we and our fathers. From our youth till this day, we have not obeyed the Lord our God. Let's pray. Father, you have spoken to us with clarity and with power. We thank you for that. Uh, write it on our hearts. Change us from the inside out by the power of your word, according to the power of your spirit, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.